slider, let's take a look at it. So it was labeled as being packed with PE Compact, but as you can see, the segments don't seem to show anything really. It's just a text section. There doesn't seem to be much information really. Looking at it, there's resources here. The iData, this seems pretty normal. There's nothing really to show that it's been packed with P Compact. I haven't looked at P Compact before, and so I'm not too sure if it has a segment or whatever, but it was labeled as being packed with it, so let's just assume it is. So as you can see, the start function is very small. When we try and actually create a function from it, it will put it in the auto analysis queue and it won't actually let us display the instructions in a graph mode because it's not actually recognized as a function. So that's one giveaway that it is in fact packed because the functions aren't recognized really by either. And as you can see, it's simply just moving this location into EAX. And when we take a look at it, there's not really much here. It's just a return after performing these instructions. However, we can see, you know, it's seemingly moving a jump into EDX. Uh, this is actually quite common in banking malware where it hooks the different API addresses. It moves a jump call, which is OXE9, into the first five bytes of the API. In this case, it's just unpacking, so we don't need to worry about that. But as we scroll down, we can see here it's calling EAX. And based on the arguments, I'm gonna assume that it's calling virtual allocate. And as we scroll down, it calls ECX. Not too sure what ECX will be. It seems to have three arguments, so it's quite difficult to say. Uh, it looks like another call to virtual allocate. So perhaps ECX is virtual allocate because if we look at EAX here, it does have ECX moved into it before calling. So let's assume that in this case, ECX is virtual allocate. But rather than getting too into analyzing this, let's jump back. We can see that if anything's gonna execute after the start function, it would be these instructions here. And there doesn't seem to be a lot to it. It just returns after calling some assembly instructions I've barely ever seen. So, let's check these strings and as you can see you know it's got one string in the whole entire file and that's just kernel 32.dll if we check the imports there are only four imports and the exports is only just the star export so what i did was i opened it up in x32 debug already and x32 debug opened up the dll handler making it quite clear that this file is in fact a dll so as you can see we're now in the start function and it does actually execute the instructions seen here. So because there's no real way we can go about doing this, let's just put a breakpoint on virtual allocate and a breakpoint on virtual protect. And let's just run. And we hit an exception here, but let's just run again, see what happens. Okay, so we've just stepped over the exception. We hit virtual allocate, follow and dump again there are these functions here in this region of memory and I'm gonna guess that we're actually executing in this region of memory here so if we jump to user code yep it, we're definitely executing in this region here so now if we follow this and dump we get we can assume that it's going to fill this in with some code and then it's going to execute it or jump to that code in this function so if we actually click F9 again it inserts code into here if we jump to user code in this case, we're not actually executing from it, but let's run again and go to user code. So yeah, it definitely does seem that maybe I was wrong with my assumption. Let's just check the strings, see if there's anything there. Okay, doesn't seem to be any strings whatsoever. And we hit virtual protect now. So it's calling virtual protect on the executable itself. So let's jump to the user code. Okay, let's read the strings, still no strings here. Okay, let's hit the return now. See what the value is. Okay, so there's a lot of no operation commands here. See if we can find any calls to registers or anything. It doesn't seem to be any. So let us now just run again. We hit virtual protect once more on the original executable. And we're still in the same section. So let's do it again. Jump to use the code. So it's now, it seems like it's just calling virtual protect on all the sections. So if we hit the return again, keep going. So this looks like now it's been pretty much unpacked, I think, because this jump to EAX, I'm assuming will take us to the unpacked region of memory. So we can assume that we're now executing the unpacked executable because we're in the different region of memory. 
compared to what we were executing from before. So one way to check this is by checking the strings and there doesn't seem to be any. So let's just take the jump here, hit the jump to EAX and run strings again. And as you can see, the strings have all appeared. It's not just one string anymore. So by looking through this, mentions to privileges and stuff, we've got different API calls, LSA stuff. So this seems to be some sort of dumping tool, GSEC dump or something, probably something like Mimikatz based on the dumping hashes and everything. So what we could probably do now is by going back and you know, we could set this as the OEP, use Scylla to try and find the import address table, see if we can get the imports, but apparently it's not inside the image, so we'd have to rebase it. But in this case, what you can do now is you can, you know, classify this as a certain piece of malware. You can say that you now know exactly what this is, and you can Google what it does because it seems to be a well-known tool. I wouldn't say this is any custom malware or anything like that. It's probably well documented, so you can analyze it in the debugger from here or you can just dump it out and manually add the hashes as you go along. So now that we've unpacked the PE compact file, we can move on to analyzing and unpacking the final file, which is packed with a packet called ASPack.